Okay, well, hello everyone. Thanks for coming. It's nice to have you here. We're gonna be talking about connecting employee skills to their future jobs. That's picture me. My name is Cami Smith. I use she, her pronouns, and I work in talent development and assessment here in the Lori Student Center. So I would love to know who's in the room. We've got a small group, so let's introduce ourselves. Nancy, what you look at me? <laughs> why don't you start us off? Okay, I thought I had to click something else. Um, so most of us are from the LSC, um, but we are all from the Division of Student Affairs. Office Not, of Inclusive Excellence has been part of it. We're very strong partners. We, we um, very strong. Yeah, same, same, <laughs> same, same, but different. Um, well, the Division of Student Affairs um, aims to engage students through a proactive, data-informed, asset-based, and collaborative approach to student success by focusing on the three following areas, well-being, sense of belonging and purpose, and career development. As you might guess, today we're going to talk about career development. Um, the Career Center defines career development um, as the lifelong process of learning, working, engaging in personal growth experiences, navigating systems, and transitioning. Through this process, an individual is better positioned to achieve a personally determined and evolving future, aligning with their goals, aspirations, identities, and values. So, 65% of LSC employees are unable to see how their work relates to their future jobs. That's huge. That's unreal. Like, blows my mind. Um, as supervisors, leaders, and educators, it's up to us to have conversations with our students to help them make connections between their job duties and the skills that they are honing by doing those specific duties. Uh, according to research done by LinkedIn in 2023, these are the top 10 skills that uh, employers are looking for. Some you can imagine would be on there, communication, leadership, management. I think project management specifically surprised me, um, but that's what Asana's for. <laughs> Asana's an online project management software. Um, these are the 10 career competencies put forth by the Career Center. Um, these are the ones that we try to relate back to the job duties that students are doing um, because the Career Center is great at providing those resources for us and they help make those connections as well. Um, when we look at the list side by side, we can see that there are some that cross over directly. Um, teamwork, inclusive teamwork, analytical skills, I would argue is critical thinking and problem solving. Leadership, leadership, communication, communication. I would argue you could probably make most of these crossover. Like I think you could argue that uh, customer service is part of inclusive teamwork. Sorry. Yeah, hard to read. Um, <laughs> we we I did get this feedback. This is hard to read. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just going to talk you through an example. So when I was a sophomore, I got a job at Cam's Lobby Shop, which is downstairs. If you'd asked me what skills I was gaining by working there, I'd have laughed and said I'm gaining beer money, like not gaining anything. Um, but time has granted me wisdom. And now when I look back, I can make a connection between the job duties and the skills that I was honing by doing those. Ooh. Uh-oh, how do I work in? So I was a cashier, I handled transactions. Um, I was responsible for a register, um, pretty monotonous. You do the same thing over and over and over again, day after day. Um, I didn't think of it then, but you know, working with money, working with the register, I feel like that improves your personal accountability. You know, you're counting money at the end. If the money's off, like that's an issue. So you have, you have to be trustworthy and learn how to be responsible and accountable. Um, throughout that time at the, that same C store, I used three different point of sale systems. Um, that's gonna be just your cash register, cash register with a different operating system. Through those three cash registers, I feel like that has improved my digital proficiency. 
I would argue you could put me in front of any cash register and I could figure it out. Um, and then finally, uh, CAMS had a whiteboard or chalkboard out front. Um, and every other week I used to draw on one side of the chalkboard. Um, and it might sound silly, but drawing like popular or not so popular cartoons and like trying to decide what phrase to put with it to get people to come into the store. I feel like it really let me show off my creativity. I got to think what combination of product and Elmo would bring people into the store. Also sounds like marketing. Oh, hey, yeah. all right, look at that. <laughs> they all relate. I lost my mouse. Okay, now we're gonna do a little activity. So you have a worksheet. I, I oh. believe everyone has oh, a worksheet okay. already. Ready. Um, so take some time to list some of the specific job duties that student employees do within their roles. Um, and then once you've listed them, start drawing lines between them and the um, desired skill that they relate to. I'll give you like five minutes. I didn't know I had to bring a pen. I got you covered. She has an envelope. I have an envelope with a pen in it. That's the only thing that has. I feel like it's easier to connect some of their duties to the career center mm -hmm. things than it is the top 10 skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that if you'll you'll see down at the bottom, that's why I was like, now now try to connect it to the career competencies. <laughs> I agree that it's much it's much easier to do. And I think that's because the career competencies were specifically put out by the career center, you know, all the skills that we can help students improve on. Um, so yeah, it's much easier to relate for sure. But I think also to that point, like we know that students come to college to get a job, right? And and what they gain and glean beyond that, it's like they don't know what they don't know necessarily, like all of yeah. us, right? And so like, I love your example about Cam's. It's like when I reflect, I got these things, mm -hmm. but Cammy's example is a perfect, like, oh, the job that I want is gonna have me need to do these. And this really, the research that LinkedIn did, they did a scanning of all the jobs posted right and so what popped up most yeah. and so these are keywords and so if we can if we can figure out how to help them bridge it for them or see what they're doing as like maybe personal accountability is leadership because it's leading by example mm -hmm. you know yeah absolutely. there are some different ways to frame it yeah thanks for letting me add that of course you know for me with our team the ones i could not connect were sales research and marketing okay because we just don't do a lot of that. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Like all the others, yeah, there's a di direct link. Yeah. You know, with project management, it is restocking the closets. It yeah. is, you know, taking care of your tools, et cetera. So. And that's something that the, st the students just think of it as something that they do. They don't think of it as like... They think of it as a task. Yes. Yeah, that mm -hmm. has to be done and sometimes neglect. <laughs> <laughs> as we do with tasks sometimes. Well, I can honestly say that, like I did it from my position, simply yeah. because I do not have, I don't manage anybody, mm -hmm. but like I find the majority of them, sales, obviously not in there, but like the research, um, needing to know how the machine operates, yeah. needing to know the maintenance on the machine, yeah. um, the technical aspects of the machine, um, research chemicals with the machine, mm -hmm. yeah. and I would think like in some cases that could apply to students. I think most of them haven't applied for jobs. Yeah. So you don't do your resume. So crossing, that's that's really difficult to think of those crossovers and what that means. Yeah. Um, we all do customer service. Yeah. And we help people along the way. Um, communication is king because knowing when one job is finished and yeah. how to proceed on to the next. So timing and um, being aware of other people and like where they're at yeah. at a given time and how that affects your job and so teamwork. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, project management literally are, because being here as well, our jobs uh, change due to the um, groups that come yeah. and uh, hold classes or events mm -hmm. here. So that again, another is like teamwork and 
analyzing again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like when do they get out? When can we clean this area, not clean this area? Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Yeah, I do the same thing. Prioritizing yeah. the autonomous work, group mm -hmm. work yeah. is yeah. all yeah. part of that teamwork and Absolutely. analytical. Yeah. Well, and the individual work is personal accountability. Mm -hmm. Can you be, can we trust you to get XYZ done? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clock in and out. Yeah. <laughs> Clock in when you're actually at work. Yeah. Yeah. That's always a good one. Because integrity is one of our principles of community. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Bradley, just to put you on the spot, you want to you wanna share? Uh, sure. Uh, for instance, just that I mean, because we all are doing the same, but a yep. different aspect of it. We'll do like uh, working on our floors. Mm -hmm. You know, just in that, students are just, oh, it's another task with just a bunch of tasks inside of it. They're doing management, they're doing communication, yeah. because they got to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. They're obviously offering a customer service mm -hmm. because they got to pay attention to the customers inside the building while they're operating yeah. on the floors. I mean, it hits project management, it hits teamwork. Mm -hmm. Pretty much just what Nancy said, it just doesn't hit sales, yep. marketing, mm -hmm. and uh, research really I mean they could do research on it but that's kind of our role position. yeah right? there's right. students they're going to school that don't want to <laughs> have me now you need to do research on the floor go take this like, test you know, on like, laminate I got enough paperwork to do so yeah I didn't include research for the students for that very fact we train them on things whether it's how to do a task or how to run a machine but we don't ask them to research the chemicals because they don't have a choice. They get what I buy. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, everybody. Sales, I guess, if we point them towards Ram Bookstore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey, if you, if you tell them where to go get a refreshing snack, you know, Cam's <laughs> Lobby Shop is open. That's... Well, we can go to Mugs. Well, actually, we have numerous See? Yeah. So now we have So now, now we've roped in that customer, or not customer service, now we've roped in sales. Full new app commission yeah. based Absolutely. off of those references. <laughs> so recognizing the historical and current context of educational inequity, it's easy to assume that all of our employees are getting access to this information when in reality they might not be, um, especially employees with marginalized identities. Um, so I believe that we have an obligation to help them make these connections as frequently as possible. Um, so for a while, I know um, the Career Center required you to at the end, when you posted a job on handshake after each job duty you had to specifically list which career competency that job duty was relating to they don't do that anymore or they don't require that anymore but i do think that could be really helpful a uh, helpful practice to help those students bridge that gap whether that's you as a supervisor providing them already or having them the student make the connection like, hey, here's your job description. Here's the career competencies. Show me what you think. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we do need to make these connections very explicitly because sometimes st students don't look outside their own bubble and they've got their own lives and their own things going on. So forcibly making that connection and, you know, really driving it home is beneficial. Can we come in? Yeah, absolutely. When I think about some of this and the in employment as an educational and leadership experience, it ties directly to experiential learning, right? And I think about experiences that I had at college that I just went through them at one after the other after the other, but didn't have anyone sit down with me and say, hey, you just did that. What did you learn from it? I had this horrible like float building experience for homecoming that still sits with me. <laughs> and if I had had a different way to process through that or like a challenging coworker that you're working with, right? That's communication, that's conflict management skills. But I, I didn't, that reflection process, being with someone and having someone care enough even if it's just a five or 10 minute conversation once a month to be like, hey, okay, what have we been doing and what do you want to do and how do we make that connection? Like experiential learning is really, you have the experience, you process it and take that learning into the next one. Um, and I think that there is such opportunity. And if we incorporate a few more of the check-ins or um, the performance evaluations, which I know we're really upping in the Lori Student Center, specifically in operations, there's lots of these opportunities to sit down with our folks and do that. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so onboarding is an excellent time to tell employees what to expect throughout their course of employment. Let them know that, you know, throughout your tenure here, you can expect to improve in X, Y, Z. Like, you know, your, your time with us, during your time with us, we will improve your digital proficiency and your leadership skills. Mm -hmm. um, lay it out for them explicitly. If you do mid-year check-ins, um, which some areas do, some don't, um, it's a good time to remind them of the skills they're gaining. Um, just a little check-in, like, you know, how, how do you feel like you're doing on your digital proficiency? Well, let's, let's keep working on it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the performance evaluations are big. We're really pushing those um, as a career readiness tool um, to pr uh, expose students to it before they actually have their first real performance evaluation. Um, the idea is that it's, it won't be as scary or as nerve wracking if they can have some practice with it in college before they go off into the real world. Um, and those evaluations are a time to have the employee self reflect and rate themselves on how they think they're doing. And then you can come in as a supervisor and give your two cents on that. Um, when it comes to professional development, um, I think us connecting employees with resources that will help them talk about these skills and competencies on resumes um, is really essential. Um, the Career Center and SHAPE, shameless plug, are great places to start um, mm -hmm. for making those connections. <coughs> That's all the prepared material I have. So I'd love to open up with questions or thoughts or anything that you might have. You know, I was thinking about the conversation we were having with Marissa outside when she was getting the students to look at the schedule to come to some of these. And it it connected to what you all were saying about like, you know, just in the job, we don't do these things. And so it's like, how can we in this larger community, right? Either the Lori Student Center, the Division of Student <coughs> Affairs, our partners, the career or the um, cultural resource centers, like how can we uplift and connect where we know that sometimes our responsibility, like our jobs won't hit all 10 mm -hmm. and they're not ex expected to hit all 10, but how can some of those, like if um, we know Laura in marketing and we know our student is interested in some of that, could they at least do an informational interview with someone to get access to some of like, what is it like mm -hmm. to really do project management in this area? Um, so just coming up with like, interesting ways that we can connect them to other people around, even if we know that our thing is not what they're going to want to be doing forever. Yeah. Who do we know that we can connect them to? Because ultimately, I think so much of the collegiate experience is about also who you know and who you are connected to um, and expanding your knowledge on it. Yeah, I have a student employee named Jasmine who really wants to go into consulting of some kind. Um, so. I'm sure I will be pushing them towards Emily, who is in consulting, um, to you know do like an informational interview, pick your brain, get that kind of information, and yeah, helping students make those make those connections is beneficial. You know more people than your student does, most likely, at least on campus. So you can help foster those relationships. So one of the things that I kind of have the problems with with kind of connecting like what they're doing now to their future job mm -hmm. is where I it's custodial work. Yeah. So I go in the future. That's just what I have to do at my house. You know, they don't. Mm -hmm. yeah, even though I try and like connect things like that. Yeah. Like oh well, that's like simple. That, that, that you can make that example out of anything. And just some of them like when you'll try to like. Do you like the evaluation and stuff? They're like, just a college job. Why? Why is there so much extra to it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, we're trying to teach you. Isn't that what like classes for? <laughs> no. So I get like, <laughs> it's so true. yeah, like, yeah, well, so so you've got you got a job on campus, like, and this is the student center, right? So we try to focus and like relate mm -hmm. it to it, and then they kind of like. Why? Good job at King Supers then? Yeah. And they can Not make that choice. Them, yeah. But some mm -hmm. of them yeah, absolutely. Like, why is there this extra as I like try and yeah. cool, or, like let them know what it can bring. Like, you know, like when you go out and do your next job, your boss is gonna have like these same conversations. Yep. With you. Yeah. 
so this is help building for it, but they they don't want to like make the connection as you said like yeah. more later when you can look back and see the connection. Yeah, the the, the, oh, the distance know, gives oh, you. Oh, yeah. I get what he was doing, but it's just how do I do that now to like try and maybe get them to like oh. When when you have these like meetings, do you do them like one on one with the employees? I I think maybe yeah paying them to come in and sit with you to talk about that stuff, like a 30 minute check in where like we're going to go through the job duties together and talk about it. If you're paying them, maybe they'll be more willing to do it. Um, well, it's always on paid time. Right. Well, I know. Well, that's just unfortunate. Uh, I yeah. try to get them because they, you know, like, oh, I don't have much time. I'm a student because even in doing like some of the other TOD training yeah. and stuff like mm -hmm working in a multi-generational workforce mm -hmm. they even like compare like more of these generations they see it as like it work is another task in their day because oh, no. they do a lot more volunteer work and everything so it's just like another thing that they do in their day yeah, yeah. so it's not necessarily like their main focus their yeah. main focus right now is school that's the job mm -hmm. school and right now, internships and volunteering like this yeah. isn't necessarily right. a job it's just another task to their day yeah, that's yeah, true because I'll often hear a lot of them say who are like getting nearing the end they're like I'll never list this on my oh well, their resume this on my job application mm -hmm. but the list things like what Bradley's talking about volunteer mm -hmm. and I think like our our reviews are so thorough mm -hmm. honestly if they if they wanted to dial into anything that would be it yeah like this is a reflection of your performance and um your performance connects to like how you clean is actually really related to how you work in school yes. and how you present perform yourself in your future job yeah. and stuff like that and i think a lot of them maybe don't maybe or perhaps get that connection yeah to what they're doing so we do also <clears throat> offer this training for students mm -hmm. so you know, maybe maybe we have a training for your students on connecting. Um, we did it two years ago. Uh, like did we do this one? I don't know if we did this one. It was skills. It was skills. Yeah. Then I believe you. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, Bradley, I'm thinking a lot about what you said, and for me, it's it's like a game of rhetoric, right? I remember taking a class in. Um, it was like a communication class, and it was called rhetoric, and it was looking at all like the Grecian rhetoricians in the past. And really all I came out of that was like, oh my God, you can argue anything. Yeah. You can frame anything. Yeah. And I think my snarky answer to the student who's like, why th this isn't anything. It's like, that's a very uncreative way of thinking about it. So good job not seeing one of the, the career, <laughs> the career yeah, uh, right? You're getting a great flow <clears throat> on that one. On, on creativity. <laughs> but I do think it's like, when we help them create some of those even if they don't want it now it's like i hope that we all can assess and or, or have a conversation come to mind where we had it and then you got some distance from it and then they came back and were like i see it differently now right like probably i don't know if your kiddo is big enough to do that but i hope when he gets older he's gonna come back and be like dad i understand right like i get it yeah 14 year olds yeah probably not <laughs> yeah, not, not at 14 yet right give it another 10 years but i think like as educators 20. we have to trust the ripple right we have to not that we know more than they do there's different experience right breadth of and so if we stay founded and steadfast in and believe it ourselves because that's the thing we have to believe it ourselves yeah. right we have to say a position in environmental service where the upkeep restoration um appearance that created a container for all of these other things to happen that provided connection and creativity and all of that like it's it's about how we frame it yeah. and it's about how we believe what we're saying in terms of, okay, well, let's take the solutions. You have to be real careful about what solutions you mix mm -hmm. and what you don't, right? And that takes attention to detail. Yep. Yep. So you put attention to detail in your skills under the job responsibilities, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's a whole nother thing. 
So it's about how they are transferable, translatable, and essential to any position they're gonna get, right? And even if they're giving you some snark now, they won't later. Yeah. Yep. One of the best job applications I ever saw come through here for a student, she listed clear from babysitting when she was 12. Really? The problem solving. Oh, wow. I mean, it, as well as the CPR yeah. and everything, but the problem solving and the critical thinking and the safety issues. I mean, she listed all of that. And That's wonderful. Yeah. And she was good. Extremely yeah. good and mm -hmm. extremely successful when she graduated. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So. Well, I think too, the other thing I think this is like we're one of the few universities that has this student center is run, is student run. Yeah. yeah. It is a student run organization. So when you put it in those terms, mm -hmm. that your, your job was a facet of a student run organization. Mm -hmm. that, that's huge. It's a game changer. Yeah. It makes, it makes your role more important. Yeah. yeah. And that the building functions, like, from my perspective, this is like one of the cleanest, oh, great. most highly functioning mm -hmm. buildings with the highest amount of traffic oh. across the university. And it's pristine, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Uh, quality work life study. There's one that we rate the Sky Factor. Sky, Sky Factor. Factor. Mm -hmm. Cleanliness on Sky Factor, we always do really well. Out, outstanding. Yeah. So huge props to you all. Yeah, so like looking at it from maybe that perspective, like mm -hmm. from that top down. Well, maybe even having access to those results. I mean, I, I don't know, do you ever tell your employees, like when we compare to other universities, we rank better in our cleanliness. Our bathrooms are cleaner. I mean, it might not matter to them, but it might give them a sense of pride that, you know, we clean our bathrooms better than Arizona or, you know, our well, this is a thing too, like when you go to a mechanic, if you walk in and that oh, mechanic's see. garage is like flawlessly clean, oh, yeah. you feel like good. found it's the trust. Guy. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. I'm the opposite. I'm like, it's too clean. You have clearly never done any work in here. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, man. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, no one trusts well, you to do like, work. <laughs> but then, like, yeah, no, I get you. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole theory around campus ecology. And it says that the environments that we're in help dictate the behavior that we do. Um, and, and that's just shown again and again. And, um, you know, Julia was thinking about what you were talking about. Like, it is an intentional facet of CSU, I think, holistically, because we have over 8,000 student employment assignments mm -hmm. on campus. And when you look at <clears throat> the Lori Student Center, we're at 650 student employees and then over a thousand when you connect in the cultural resource centers and career center partners, yeah. and the partners like it's it's pretty astounding. Jocelyn, talk what kind of um, student employees are over in OIE? <coughs> um, at the house, we have our front desk students mm -hmm. um, and then also not at the house, well, kind of at the house. We don't have, we're floaters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my area. We float. Um, Your fixers? We're kind of wherever, yeah. <laughs> so we also have graduate students who work on our graduate student of color association programming, um, and then our murals grad coordinators, mm -hmm. and then we have murals entourage, which they work here with me, and then we have our innovation experience mm -hmm. intern students. Um, we used to have lab interns that lived around campus, but we're cutting that program. Mm -hmm. So, kind of all of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the <coughs> seat. We have our seat. Oh, yep. Students, the students engaging and empowering the dialogue. Yeah. 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 So again, extensive, right? And I think you think one thing, it's like, oh, they do reception. It's like, nope, the breadth, yeah. right? Oh, you do custodial. It's the breadth. Like, we have to help fill in and flush out those understandings of the breadth of. Yeah. And if we can do it and help our students do it, then they can talk about that next. Um, <clears throat> I know when I left the convenience store, I sent my resume to a lot of the employees that currently work there because I've spent a lot of time like beefing up, you know, the portion of, you know, what you did in this convenience store and your duties and like how, what you actually gained from that. Um, and I think doing that, a lot of them are like, 
I never would have written out the job like this. And I'm like, exactly, but you did all those things. Like you very much have worked on these skills, so you should include them. So I think it's, it could be beneficial too to maybe show an excellent resume where someone has listed out the, the job duties of the custodial and made it sound good. Like show them that it can be done. <clears throat> you might not be planning on listing it, but this person did and it helped them. Is that something that Career Center helps students? Absolutely. Well? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. That the Career Center is a great resource. They do lots of one-on-one -on -one coaching um, with students, um, and they have walk-in appointments as well. And I think they start back up next week. Their walk-in <clears> appointments. <throat> and students have access to the Career Center. I think up to a year after they yep. graduate. Mm -hmm. and yep. people, I'm talking. I just graduated last May, and I'm talking to friends, and they still don't have jobs. They've been unemployed for the last year, and I'm like. Did you go to the career center? Yeah. And they yeah. said no. Did you evaluate your resume? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and they've been sending, pushing their resumes everywhere. And I'm like, did you go to the career center? And they said, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Well, I think if you're a part of the alumni association, you get access to career center yes, resources as well. Um, I was going to say also, um, if you re you should, they should reach out to the alumni association uh, because. I have known people who have graduated and the Alumni Association will still help them with mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. why I told them. And they're like, no, no, and it's fine. Them. No, no, he set up an appointment. Good, so good. Look at you well, connecting but... people to resources. Yeah. I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're doing great. Anything else? I also like to ask students when they come in for interviews and stuff, like what how do you see this job connecting to your future career? Mm -hmm. And if that's missing, then is that something that we goal set yeah. together? Yes. Something I'm trying to work on. You do that in the interviews <clears throat> or once they come in to the job? Yeah, okay. that's part of my interview question of like, you know, what do you want to do for your career? And then also, how do you see this fitting into that? Mm -hmm. And if there's not a connection that they see, but I see, then I'm like, okay, great, we'll just develop that. Yeah. Or I have a student who's returning and her job now doesn't necessarily relate to what she wants to do and she's graduating next year. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to develop kind of a personal project huh. so that she can work on that and still help the team in her role, but leave with kind of that skill under her belt. So she doesn't write anything else about yeah. this job. She at least has that. Yeah, well, hey, way to get creative, career competency, with uh, <laughs> how to help her out. That's <clears throat> This is me. Uh, research shows that if you don't do anything with this information 24 to 48 hours after, it's like you never came to the training. So I encourage you to talk about this with someone. Uh, set an appointment up on my calendar. Let's go get coffee and talk about it. All the things. Tell your supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe that, maybe don't do that. <clears throat> um, and then please do the post-event assessment. Okay, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for coming, yeah. everybody. Thank you. I guess we can all go and bother Tomlin, I guess. Since he's oh, oh right. yeah, why don't you all go Here tell Tomlin about this? <laughs>